Getting rid of your heater. If you're looking around trying to figure out where the hoses go, coming right off of here, it loops around and goes toward the uh, the interior, but you can't see here. You can see it. I'll show you where mine was. I already took them out, but you can find them just inside there. In fact, we're looking into the bus now through where the there used to be a little plate with a top hose and a bottom hose, and that was your send and return. But I took them both out, and I will show you what we did. We cut off a lot of the hose from the interior of the bus and made a new one that goes from this bracket around. We put it in the original hanger, and then down. Okay, we're down under the bus now. You can see all this daylight right here was the access point where the hoses came past the radiator and went into the bus that way. And then you can see right there is the water pump. And you had them routed that way. Um, but if you're taking it out, you don't have to worry about any of that. We unhooked the hose clamps, pulled the hoses out, cut all that stuff and pulled it out and where I showed you a second ago where it came out of the top we looped it down around the frame rail and came right up into the bottom right there and that is the route now it goes out of one into the other and you'll see it has a hard shutoff valve on my bus there and on the top side, which means we didn't actually have to reattach this hose to anything. Um, but we chose to do it that way in the event that if somebody was ever changing the oil or doing anything under there, if they bumped this valve, all of a sudden we were going to be shooting coolant all over the road and everything. We could uh, lose the engine over it. So this hose although it's unnecessary with our valve on either side it is a pretty solid redundancy so that uh, we don't lose coolant and blow up the engine. So it was really important for us to have the floor space in our bus and uh, we have a 2002 Thomas built safety liner and it's like this with a lot of buses but I know that ours especially we have a really really big uh, heater box about mid bus. It was under the seat right in front of the emergency door and so when we took the seat out we were like man this massive box has to go because actually we're doing a side hallway in our bus and we were gonna have to step over it if we left it there and, and we just didn't really need it because we're gonna have or we have we'll have too many splits and uh, it's an AC and heat pump and we just we didn't need the stock bus and our bus is made for travel, we're gonna travel in it, but we're also gonna be parked a lot. It's gonna be our tiny house that's stationary uh, quite a lot. So having a heater all the time that works with the heat of the engine when the engine isn't really gonna run all the time, it just didn't seem like a thing that we were gonna do. We were able to locate all the heater hoses and uh, there's a heater core up front under the thing, under the uh, under the bus, right behind the driver's seat, and so we found that, and we found the heater core, we found all the lines, we found the well, obviously we found the heater box because it was in everybody's way in the middle of the bus. But then it's just honestly, it's knowing the way that engines work. While I'm not a mechanic, I'm a musician and multimedia guy, but I love cars. I, uh, my first car ever was a vintage classic car, and uh, we grew up going to car shows and. Not to mention I grew up on a farm and uh, we build or fix anything on the farm. Uh, it's a thing you learn because you know, you have to. Like you, uh, you fix that tractor or you don't work. It's just kind of an acquired thing that, uh, or uh, I guess a skill that you learned out of necessity. So I have that and uh, 
at 33 years old at the recording of this video. And then my dad is helping me work on the bus and he also grew up on a farm way more even than I did, a much bigger operation. So he has that much more experience uh, doing it. So it was just, it was easy for us. It was an easy choice to make. Like, let's just know the path that, that the uh, that the coolant is going and uh, make a loop. And I don't know how it is on a lot of buses, but on the Thomas built uh, safety liner, maybe they did this to make it easy. I don't know. But either way, we had hard cutoff valves. You turn the thing 90 degrees and it cuts off. And so we could have bypassed it that way. But, you know, just for the sake of, you know, maybe somebody that's changing the oil one day accidentally bumps the handle a little bit with a wrench or something. And all of a sudden we have gallons of coolant flooding our home or otherwise running on the ground while we're trying to drive. And then all of a sudden the, the engine overheats and we don't have any coolant and we're on the side of the road. Um, either of those scenarios were bad. So we were able to take out the box and by the way, do it with a bucket handy if you're gonna do it. Um, we didn't have a bucket handy and we were on a hill. So as soon as we broke free of the hose clamps on the, uh, on the heater box about halfway through our bus. We had the awesome red coolant running all over the floor and it wasn't cool. So definitely have a bucket that you can unhook it and throw it in the bucket right away. Save yourself some heartache and a lot of cleanup. And a lot, a lot, a lot of cleanup. But because we were able to take the heater hose out, we were able to take the heater core out of the front and uh, and all of that, we had, I mean, we had probably 80 feet of hose. Um, and it's, I think it was one and a half inches, which is the same as the actual hoses running the coolant through the engine and the radiator in the back. So we had more than enough hose to go ahead and complete the circuits. And we came out of the housings that the valves are on and just made the loop. So the water runs, you know, through the water pump out of the top of the engine and it completes the circuit through, uh, through all of that little loop by the engine that goes in the radiator and then back around and uh, the cycle continues. We left all the valves, we left all of that stuff in case that for some reason we think we made a huge mistake or something later on and we want to put everything back in, we saved it. And uh, all we have to do is reverse it again, break the loop and run the loop up here. It's all just one continuous loop. Side note, if you don't know how heaters work in your car or in this case in a bus, the heat of the engine heats the coolant, the coolant heats a uh, miniature radiator called a heater core and then a fan blows across that and then that's how you have heat so the heat of the engine heats your heater so a lot of people have been saying oh man what well, now you're screwed because what, what are you going to do for defrost what are you going to do for heater while you're driving or whatever so what we did we left all of the duct work and what we'll do, since we're not going to be driving, it's not like we're going to be putting thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. I mean, it just, it wasn't important to us to keep the vehicular functions uh, at 100% as far as, oh, well, we have to keep our heater and we have to keep this and whatever. We're going to use the stock ductwork. Um, and instead of having the heater core there that the air blows by and and then goes into the defroster and then into the face vents and into things like that. We're gonna have an electric heater and it's gonna go into that ductwork and then we'll be able to route it from there into everything. And uh, maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, but it's what we're gonna do and it's what we're gonna try. And uh, you know, honestly, if it doesn't work, we'll put it back. It'll be full speed ahead in the way that the fine folks at Thomas Built Buses intended. I will say if we ever do that, we will get the appropriate hoses to run it under the bus, so we never have even remotely a chance for a uh, another spill, because that was awful. And that was just with a metal floor. If we, <laughs> if we had that coolant spilt in a, inside of our actual home once it's built, uh, that could be catastrophic and nobody wants that. So if we ever do put it back, it'll be under the bus and the lines will be ringing under the bus all the way up here. Honestly, I, in my opinion, that's the way it should be anyway. If you've gotten anything out of this video and out of our stories and pictures and videos of our heater core deletion and coolant loop in the engine, if you've gotten anything out of it, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you haven't gotten anything out of it, I'd love to hear about it. Basically, if you're watching this video, please comment. I'd love to know who's watching. It's always cool to see uh, sees our videos. So definitely comment, if nothing else, like it. And we'd love to ask you to subscribe to our channel because 
it's not just how we did this, how we did that. We're, we're planning on sharing a lot of life and stuff through through this channel and through our bus. And it's cool, man. Like the, the bus community is such a cool thing. And we already feel like we're a part of something super special the way it is. And I feel like it's only going to get better. So definitely reach out. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and we hope that you get out of this as much as we get out of doing it for you. So thanks.